What is up everybody? Thank you for tuning back into my weekly YouTube uh, vlog. This week we're doing something completely different from anything I've ever done before. I've never made what we're gonna make today and uh, that's really exciting for me since it seems like I just do a lot of things over and over and over again and uh, I don't get to try new things very often. So today we're going to try to make a fiberglass fan shroud for my rear mount radiator setup. So if you've ever seen somebody make like a subwoofer box or um, some other car audio fiberglass stuff. It's going to be very similar to that except I'm using it for fans instead of speakers. So I went over to Home Depot Racing and uh, Walmart Super Supplies and got um, fiberglass mat, I got fiberglass cloth, I got resin, MDF, I got everything I need. Total cost for this project so far is about $50 and uh, I'm going to try to make my own fiberglass fan shroud. In the past I've repaired some fiberglass parts and I've you know mixed resin up and put it on things but I've never actually made anything worthwhile or worth telling to you guys because it always came out very badly this time I hope to actually use it if you've seen HGK's carbon fiber rear fan shroud on their Eurofighter cars I want to make something similar to that but not quite the same you know I want to put my little twist on I want to fit in my car specifically not in a Eurofighter because those Eurofighters actually use enormous radiators. One of the benefits of using a fiberglass shroud instead of just buying an aluminum one is A, I guess you could say weight. So weight, I'll have the mold so I can make it out of carbon fiber if I want to later, if I actually get good at this. Secondly, I can fit two 16 inch fans on a 25 inch radiator. So I can make the rings for the fans as big as I want and uh, I can make it much bigger than the face of the radiator and I can make them further away or closer I can really play with the dimensions to be able to really fit a lot of CFMs of fan in the radiator shroud. So that's really big for rear mount radiators and drift cars. And a lot of the professionals recommend 4,000 CFMs total for a drift car, which is uh, what two SPAL 16 inch fans will get me. I have one SPAL 16 inch fan in my E36 right now. And uh, the E92 will have two of those same fans. I'll use one and I'll buy another one. So let's go ahead and get some work done. It's super beautiful outside on a, this nice Sunday morning and uh, it's finally cool in Georgia so it's actually very comfortable in the garage. All right so the materials I've picked up some fleece material from Walmart this was like four dollars a yard and what you're really looking for in the material is that it stretches in one direction but not the other so this is great material a lot of people use this for like speaker enclosures and stuff like that but it's a little bit stretchy so we're going to use that to make kind of the overall shape of the fan shroud. We got a bunch of stuff from Home Depot, fiberglass resin, cups to mix it in, chip brushes to mix it with. We got fiberglass cloth and fiberglass mat. So I'll go into the differences in these later, but one actually provides a better finish and one provides more structural rigidity. So we got some masking tape so the fiberglass doesn't stick to what will end up being the mold, this MDF board right here. And then some leftover mat I had there, some leftover cloth, and uh, of course the tools we'll need. And gloves, because this stuff is messy. I bet you guys didn't think you're going to see much woodworking on this channel, but uh, you know, it's a new day every day. So I uh, cut out the two circles out of uh, some three quarter inch MDF I got from Home Depot. These sheets are like uh, $15 a piece, and uh, they come in like two by four. Probably a better deal to buy a 4x8. So I didn't know I was going to need more than one. And I paid more for two 2x4 two pieces of 3 quarter inch MDF than it is for a 4x8 sheet. So keep that in mind. But I cut my two circles out. I uh, ordered a 16 inch pizza and had it delivered and just took the cardboard out from underneath it and traced it onto here and made my circle. Completely kidding guys. I drilled a screw into the middle of the circle, measured it out 8.5 inches and got a 17 inch circle drawn onto the piece of MDF. And the reason I did 17 inches is so there's a one inch gap uh, between the edge of the form and the actual edge of the fan where I can screw the fan down. So yeah, I cut those out, I sanded the edge, I rounded it just a little. I think the, uh, the fiberglass may still have a bit of an issue kind of making this bend here. And I might sand it down more. It's kind of tough to see it in the camera, but you can see it's not sharp. Like this side's pretty sharp in comparison, and that's not sharp. So I might sand it down a little more. Really, I guess you should take a router and route this a little smoother, but it's probably gonna be okay. And of course I have the big square underneath them. 
and that's the size of the radiator fins so that's going to be the the square portion of the shroud the bottom of it i guess and you can actually see how much bigger two 16 inch fans really are in comparison to it so now i'm going to take some measurements these will end up sitting kind of like this since i got a little more room on the bottom than on the top and i want them to come up at a slight angle just to look kind of cool then i'm going to prop them up with some two by fours or something underneath and uh then we can wrap it in the cloth and make it look nice all right here's what i came up with you can see the two 16 inch fans are quite a bit bigger than the actual radiator itself maybe i don't know five inches bigger on either side but this is pretty easy to make guys i just screwed some two by four in, found the angle i wanted that put the fans where i wanted and kind of just stuff some wood underneath here to keep this side up just to have a little bit of an effect on the top and on the other side i just cut a couple pieces of two by fours and screwed it to there so the next thing i have to do is wrap this all with fabric i think here is going to be quite difficult so we'll see how this turns out i'm going to take the fleece wrap it over the top staple it to the edges of these and then staple the other side to this to get a nice flowing kind of you know complex curve type of mold Alright guys, we got the uh, fleece all uh, mocked up and stapled on. It looks pretty freaking cool, honestly. Um, very, very kind of similar to the HGK ones. Not so elaborate, I guess you could say, but it looks like it's going to work. So, check out what we got going on. So, oh, we got some, some schmutz here. But, uh, this is what it came out like. This is going to be the final shape. So, I stretched all the fleece around. And you can see it's gonna look pretty cool. Obviously, I'm gonna cut the centers out of these, but uh, this is gonna serve as the mold. So now you guys can see underneath here. I had to let's see if you can see it. A little focus. I had to fold the fabric because there was so much extra here. But uh, I'm gonna resin all this, and then I'm gonna try to smooth this out with like masking tape or something, or uh, bondo or something, and um, get it back to where it needs to be, so this won't be in the final form. This is actually the outside surface of this doesn't matter so much because this is actually going to be the inside of our final piece. So this is just kind of the plug for the mold right now. And the next few steps is kind of where this process differs from a subwoofer enclosure. So a subwoofer enclosure, we would put resin all over this and cut the middles of these out and bondo and paint and do all that. But, uh, and then put subwoofers in the middle of these holes. We don't want all that weight hanging off the back of our radiator. So, I'm going to put resin over it, smooth it out a little bit, cover it in masking tape or saran wrap, and then start laying fiberglass on top. I'm going to lay two layers, one of fiberglass mat, one of fiberglass cloth. Then I'm going to pop it off of this contraption we got going here. In fact, looking at it, we're not going to be able to pop it off without cutting it because of it's actually going to lock because of this ledge right here, but we'll figure that out. So I'm going to go ahead and resin this and uh, take it from there. All right, so I got all the fleece saturated with uh, resin. So that's going to dry hard as a rock. We have about two hours to wait. 
So I'm gonna go in and play some Call of Duty or something. And uh, when I come back out, this should, thing should be really solid. You can see it's super saturated. It's all wet. It, the shape obviously looks the same. These folds here, I just kind of gooped it in and I'm gonna see what I can do about that after. But we got two hours to wait, so let's head on back inside. So it's been a couple hours and uh, our mold is reasonably dry. The resin's reasonably dry. It's pretty, pretty well hardened. So if you look, you can see I can't push that part, portion in. There are other portions it seems I can push in a little bit. Maybe the fabric just wasn't as saturated. And actually there's portions like under here that are actually still kind of wet. I'm not sure why. It's been a couple hours. But I don't really care too much and uh, I'm going to start wrapping this thing with uh, painter's tape. So. so we're going to wrap the whole thing in painter's tape and uh, make it relatively smooth. Make the shape pretty nice. Then we'll be good to go to start fiberglassing over it. She's all covered up in tape and this is just to allow the fiberglass to not stick to the original mold so fiberglass won't stick to or the fiberglass resin won't stick to this tape so hopefully I can just kind of like pop it off. All right guys, I'll tell you what. My confidence in this project working is really, really low. I mean, this sucked. Doing this type of work is something I never wanna do again. And I have no idea if all of this time and all of this effort I've put in today is actually gonna be usable work in the end. I hope it is, but man, I have my doubts. Let's check it out. So I got the first uh, layer of fiberglass mat on. It was really painful, guys. The resin started drying while I was doing it. You can actually see that like, it's actually kind of dry right here. Um, there's like fiberglass hanging off the edge of it, like strands, there's air pockets in it. I mean, not really up top, I'm not too worried about, but it's the sides. It's all these compound curves down here and stuff. I made a huge mess of my table. At one point I mixed way too much up and it hardened while I was working on it. This thing's like 600 degrees right now. It's melting the plastic on the bottom. I mean, it's just one problem after another with this project and I have no idea if this is even going to work. But I sure hope it does. 
I know that it's going to be mold locked here because uh, if you think about this, I fiberglass underneath here, that means I can't just pop it forward. So I'm going to have to take a Dremel and cut this part out and then kind of resin it back on later when I do some other layers. Same with the other side, obviously. And the really scary part about this is I don't know if, I mean, I really hope so, but I have to pop this off of the uh, fiberglass or the um, masking tape. So I don't know if it's actually going to pop off. I don't know if it's going to be like, is this enough to be mold locked? Is I don't know. I don't really know. And um, I'm going to have to find out, unfortunately. But we got to wait for this to dry. We need two hours for it to dry, maybe a bit less like that. That dried in like 12 minutes, that really hot pail of literally useless shit. Um, but we're going to give it a couple hours to dry, see what it looks like and uh, hopefully put another layer on top but I think I'm running very very low on resin low on motivation low on everything this is a tough project it's been a, about an hour and a half and the fiberglass is actually really really dry so the fiberglass mat uh, actually dried much much faster than the fleece did when I had put the resin on that and I'm not sure if it's because of how much hardener I put in it or what but there's only one layer on the mold of fiberglass, but I think uh, it's okay to try to take it off now because I think I'm gonna need some of that flexibility from it only being one layer and uh, to get it off the mold. So I'm gonna go for it. Like I said earlier, this is actually gonna be mold lock. There's no way to peel this off the mold because of these kind of uh, intersections here. So actually I'm gonna take my Dremel and I'm going to run it along this line to cut this section out and cut this section out so that I can first of all peel these sides out then peel the rest of it off and it come out straight forward. Look at my 2F fenders here they did the same thing and glued them back together right here see if this edge peels off so I'm gonna try to peel the side off the other side and then I'm gonna pop the top off what do you guys think you think it'll work I don't know. looks like it didn't stick too well so hopefully I can get this out of here well, it looks like I gotta cut it a little better maybe yeah it's definitely there oh yeah no it's coming it's coming it's definitely there you can see it's kind of peeling some of the tape off too but i think that's okay there we go look at this oh yeah tape doesn't even want to stick to this stuff it's just coming off because i cut it this is this is nice that's so flexible Wow, look at that. So I would have liked it if, if the tape had stayed on the mold, but I guess it's okay. Tape's not that expensive. The moment at least I've been waiting for is to peel this big portion off. Man, I don't even know how to start it. It's like barely attached, but it's like there's so many compound curves that it's like hard to figure out where it's going to come up. So I guess maybe I should start on the flat side. Just kind of easily peel it up. Yeah, it's, it's going. It's going to go. Just going to be careful. I don't want to crack it. I don't want to hurt it. You know, I really don't know what the best route is besides just yanking on it, really. But one thing's for certain, it seems to be coming. Oh yeah. And this is actually, this fiberglass is surprisingly thick for just being one, one uh, thing of fiberglass mat. Goes to show you how thin the cloth really is. All right, we're getting there. 
almost there. Part's a little stressful. It's really kind of stuck there, but it's going. Would you look at that? How about that? What do you, what do you guys think that looks like? Well guys, I am honestly really surprised that this worked at all. I did not have any faith in this working after I had laid up all the fiberglass, but it actually came out okay. Like it looks like it's gonna work. We're back on the right track. Like it's all peeled out. Looks like, I just gotta finish peeling off this painter's tape, but it looks like I'll be able to lay some more layers on the inside of it to strengthen it up because right now it's way too thin to hold two two 16 inch spell fans. But I gotta glue the sides back on so I know the sides I had to cut them. We'll glue these bed layers back on with some resin and some fiberglass from the inside. Man, I'm, I'm like really looking good here. I'm really surprised. I hope that, you know, I lay some more fiberglass on the inside of this to strengthen it up. I'll probably do one more layer on the outside to smooth it out. And uh, hopefully it fits in the car. All right guys, so it's been a couple days since uh, I actually laid the fiberglass down and popped it out of the mold. Um, it does need some more work, but uh, I'm gonna finish that up in the next couple weeks. And I wanted to show you how far I got because where it's at now, you can actually make this on your own uh, by using this video. So I trimmed the edges off. You can kind of see there's a hole right there. I'm gonna have to fill that back in. Still have to do some sanding and clean up down here. There's a little bit of fiberglass hanging off of it. But generally, the shape is there, it's strong, it's pretty good looking mold actually, a pretty good looking fiberglass piece I think. And uh, you can see I've sanded the top, and I've also, I laid another layer of fiberglass mat on the inside of this. So I still have to strengthen up some of the edges. So next, I'm going to lay a... I'm going to lay up a layer of uh, fiberglass cl cloth on the outside that will uh, make the outside finish look a little bit better, a little bit smoother, and it will strengthen up the edges around here and stuff. Then I have to figure out how to mount it to the radiator. So guys, I'll catch you up with what it looks like all primed up and painted and mounted on the radiator and in the back of the car um, in a future video. Maybe next week is clutch kicker, so maybe a couple weeks from now. Um, I also obviously have to cut the holes for the fans, mount the fans and actually get it uh, looking good. So check back for that. And uh, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button if you like it. And if you got something to say, leave it down in the comments and I'll check them. See you guys next week.